Hi, I'm Trawler Specialist Jeff Merrill in Cape Charles, Virginia, the mouth of the Chesapeake. I'm aboard the Katie Krogan 58 Miller Time. Miller Time is hull number five. She was built in 2002, but you would not know that by looking at her today. She's a member of the Krogan Cruisers. I'm a member of the Krogan Cruisers as well. Two big anchors up here. This bow platform was redone. We've got a Rockma 70 coming back to the horizontal windlass, so you can have two anchors out if you want to. Foot buttons are down here. There is a chain locker to give you access to the road. Foot buttons over here. The non-skids all been redone. As you come back aft, there's hose pipes. There are hatches here, some seating back aft. This is a great boat. We've just done the intro and the foredeck. Let's go back and look at some more of the boat. Portuguese bridge is a great feature on the Krogan 58. We have a docking station here to starboard with the bow thruster, engine controls. There's a jog lever for autopilot. This is out of service right now, but you could recommission that. Rails up here, and then there are built-in lockers for, for cleaning supplies, extra lines. Well protected here, going up to the foredeck, working my way back to the side deck to the cockpit, or I can go around and up to the boat deck where the dinghy is and on up to the flybridge. Cockpit becomes a back patio for you. You can arrive by dinghy, come through the boarding gate here, and walk right into the boat. You also can come from the dock. You'd come in, enter on the starboard side, come around, and come back into the cockpit. We're right above the lazarette, which has the steering other machinery back there. French doors that lets you into the salon. There's another boarding gate over on this side. Outboard is a compression post for the crane. As you can see, there's some good seating area back here. The cap rail has been painted. Good overhead protection. And then forward on the starboard side is a console with a sink, barbecue, a couple of drawers, and also the shore power, which has the Glendinning reels on it. So good outside area here. If you want to be protected in the shade, or you can go up to the boat deck or the flybridge if you want to get a little more sun. But this is a great area that you'll spend a lot of time. There's also some rod holders here if you want to do some fishing. Bring in a fish, go back out onto the swim deck, bring it in, or just jump in and go for a swim. Coming in from the cockpit, you enter into the salon and galley. Two French doors. They have the little leveler uh, blinds. Lots of dogs on them. They've even added the phantom screen so you can keep insects out. On the starboard side, a large L-shaped settee, a table that has leaves on it so you can fold it out. You can go high and low, and you have great visibility out of the windows on both sides. So you'd notice that those are opening with screens, good overhead height. On the port side, two the cornice chairs, very nice recliners. There's some storage back aft. One of the projects that uh, the owners of this boat at Miller Time put on was a flat screen lift up television over forward here. Again, the windows are opening on both sides. I'm on carpeted flooring here. And as I come forward, I get up to the galley. In the galley itself, Corian countertops, a lot of working surface area. You have an upper shelf area for putting things and that conceals what you're working on. Good fiddles all the way around the boat. A trash compactor, dishwasher, double basin stainless steel sink with a Seagull for fresh water for uh, for making tea or coffee, any type of meal preparation. You can have purified water. Overhead lockers, all louvered coffee machine, and that is going to remain on the boat. They added the Blue Star four burner propane stove and oven. Got a large home size GE refrigerator here, freezer down below, microwave convection oven. Again, more storage over here. This door right here also has a screen on it. It's a little bit hard to put the phantoms on there because of the amount of space here, but that opens up. It's a Dutch door, so you can open up ventilation. That is one way out to the side deck. And then from here, you're at the forward part of the lower level. You can go up to the pilot house or down to the cabins. I should also mention over here on this port side, there's more storage over here, including an ice ice maker down here. And this hanging locker here was redesigned to put shelves in there, so they have a lot of their pantry storage items there. There's blinds underneath the balances, another closure over there. This is really an area where you're going to probably spend a lot of time relaxing once you've prepared a meal, dining, and enjoying it. It's quick out to the cockpit, quick up to the pilot house, or quick down to the cabins and the heads. The pilot house on the Krogan 58 is really a true wheelhouse with lots of room. You have the helm up forward. There's a seating area back behind. There are two doors on either side that let you go out onto the deck. They are Dutch doors that are split. The outboard windows aft are opening, so you can get some cross ventilation in here. Of course, it's air conditioned. There is a chart table area on the starboard side here 
some handrails built in, some skinny drawers you can put charts in, a Garmin display, and then there's a, a it's sensor gauge with different controls you can put in there to measure your fluid levels or tank levels, a bow thruster, spotlight. This is the remote for the windlass. And back over here, you come back, and this is where your guests can hang out while you're driving the boat. It's a great backseat driver. You can just see what's going on all the way around, get some cross ventilation, maybe have a cup of coffee here, have dining people here for a meal. Come down again to another little step here, and there's storage underneath that step. And then coming up to the helm chair, the reupholstered stid helm chair. You can adjust the height on it. I, this is just fine for me. I have an outstanding view of the foredeck from here. Up top, my ABT track stabilizers right here. The two engine panels showing me my RPMs, my pressures and my temperatures. Throttles right here. The engines both have a flow scan so I can measure my fuel burn. Radar, chart plotter, heading, compass. Two different electrical breaker panels for various uh, electronics, uh, compass and depth sounder. Kalenberg horn, wipers, and then on the other side, these are more wind instruments and a, a chain counter for the windlass, two VHF radios, there's a bilge pump panel here. The, there's a hinge at the front of this, so you can actually hinge this down if you need to work and put something else up here or do some work. Uh, overhead hatch for ventilation in here, I could keep talking. There's more drawers over on this side, and then there's the island as you come up. There are control panels for the two generators and the electrical breaker panel, the main breaker panel is there. So in the pilot house, wonderful place to be. This is probably where you'll be underway, unless it's a nice day like today, in which case you might want to be up on the flybridge. The upper aft deck has two components to it. I'm in the main deck here, the patio area, if you will, a couple of uh, lounge chairs here. You get up here by coming along the port side. There's a couple of steps as you go past the pilot house. Good railing up here with the weather cloths to give you a little more privacy. This also acts as a fence to separate you with, from the crane and the dinghy. Crane's mounted a thwart ship. Dinghy goes back here. There's a life raft back there. This whole area is great for outdoor living if you want to be out in the sun, enjoying it, relaxing. And then from here, you can also go up to the flybridge, which is right up top. Nothing like being on a flybridge when you're underway or even at rest. So on Miller time, good destroyer helm here. I uh, have excellent visibility of the compact electronics. My engine shift, two engine control panels, stabilizer panel, searchlight, bow thruster, and then looking forward, I have the chart plotter, have my force heading, VHF radio, compass, all the things I need to navigate. Plus, I can use my eyes and binoculars and look around and see what's going on. There are two chairs here, so you can be up here driving around with a friend or your spouse. There's a seating area if you want to have guests, and they're actually facing back aft, so they can be talking to you while you're underway. It's a nice L shape there with a fiberglass table. And then of course you have the Bimini cover over the top. From here, you do have the wheelhouse roof in front of you with all the antennas on it. And I just like being up on a flybridge. Good breeze coming through today. If it was rainy, I'd go back down to the pilot house. Coming down a couple of steps, you reach the lower level. This is the open office layout. So on the port side, this office area, there's a guest stateroom on the starboard side with a head, and then the owner cabin is all the way forward. So you're down at the lower level of the accommodations deck. The open office gives you all kinds of storage. You have some opening port lights outboard. There's bookshelves forward, surface area here. It's on the parquet floor. There is machinery uh, access through a hatch right here. And then from here, I could go either cabin or down to the engine room. Let's go take a look in the engine room. Redundancy is very important for the offshore cruiser. And the Krogan 58 Miller Time has two John Deere engines, and two generators, two screwdrivers. There's a lot of things on board. The Raycor fuel filters for the two mains and the two generators are duplex. So there's a lot of duplication here, which you need in case something goes bad. The headroom in this engine room is pretty good. It's actually stand up at the door. But then once you come in, you have to duck your head, mind your head. There's some foam cushions. A big tool chest right here. There are four aluminum fuel tanks in the Krogan 58. Here's the manifold. So the nice thing is if you want to switch tanks, it's right inside the door. You can get to it. You also have the Reverso fuel polishing system right here. And again, just in the entry level, you can get to the intake through hole and the strainers for the generators and also for the main engines up here. Start batteries. Outboard on the port side is the hydraulic tank for the 
active pin stabilizers, and then you can continue along this channel in the center to work your way back, check out the engines, check out the generators, and go back to the Lazarette. Let me get a different position here. I'll show you some more of the engine room. The channel has four boards, which you will lift up to get down to the bilge. I can check out the mounts on either side, change the oil, look at the fuel filters. It's very easy to get around and service items. There's a power takeoff on the port side generator. Again, outboard on both sides, the primary fuel tanks for hydraulics. And then there's a starboard generator right here, an air conditioning compressor, twin disc transmission. It's got a thrust bearing right here for dripless shaft. These panels above will open up if you needed to get some major service in. And then from here, you go back to the lazarette where your steering is. So let's go look at that next. Just below the cockpit, you can come into the lazarette through the hatch here or through the door in the engine room. It's kind of tight in here. Let me just show you what you can see. So you have storage of oils, other spare parts outboard on the port side. There's a ladder that brings you down. Back aft, of course, is the steering area. And you've got two rudders, so two steering systems. Underwater lights. There's the steering rams. There's the other steering system. Uh, some supplies, some cleaning supplies, working supplies. The Glendinning shore power cords are outboard on the starboard side. And then your crane pump outboard on the starboard side. So this is an easy area to get around in for servicing. And of course, it's a great area for storage. Primarily, it's the crane, the Glendinnings, and the steering. Just across from the office begins the hallway that goes back after the engine room, forward to the owner cabin, and on the starboard side comes to the guest cabin. So this is a great little room. There are two beds, one on either side, parquet floor in the middle, opening port lights outboard. Again, good headroom in here, a hanging locker for clothing. Close this door off for privacy, and then you go through this door into the head and shower. So let's pop over there. Close this off, and I have a stand-up shower with a handrail and a port light here. Toilet, medicine cabinet with a sink. And then across the hallway, the laundry appliances right here. So they're hidden behind louver doors, tucked out of the way. And then you come forward up to the owner area. This door will close off so that you have this hole as one separate space. If you come forward here, we have the owner's head and shower. Shower's right here. Again, good sized shower with a seat in it. And then you have the sink, toilet, some more storage over there, parquet floor, opening port light, everything you need in the head. And then the forward area is the owner cabin. So up here, big berth. You have steps to get up on either side, changing seat on either side if you wanted to read there. Reading lights, overhead lamps, overhead hatches, outboard port lights. I like the uh, cherry slats along the side. Gives it a real rich feeling up here. Hanging locker here, hanging locker there, flat screen television. And then there's a bank of drawers with a mirror. Again, you can close this whole area off and then that covers the stateroom area. There are also two machinery spaces in the hallway floor. There's one in the owner cabin and one further back aft opposite the office. So let's go look in this machinery space right now. Below the soles, there are two really great storage areas. Uh, equipment room, not really storage areas, but you can store gear in there. There's a little ladder that comes down here. The hatch covers over and I'll take the camera. I'll show you what's going on down below here. So forward is a Freeman hatch, which takes you up to the forward chamber where the bow thruster is. There's the ladder, some spare parts, water maker equipment here, aft is more water maker, and then that's the holding tank, forward on the port side, the intake through hole and pump for the deck wash, spare parts, it's a well lit area, easy to service the machinery. And here's the ladder that brings you up and down. The other machinery space in the lower level is this machinery space right here opposite the office. It's great to have these areas below the sole to get to things and service things. It's where the stuff's installed. I uh, come down a little ladder here and I'll show you what's down below. There's the ladder on the port side, the torrid hot water tank. 
intake through hole and strainer, a couple of the air conditioning units. Back aft on the port side is the active fin stabilizer actuator, transformer. Here's another air conditioning unit, the accumulator tank for the fresh water system, chargers, batteries. Way back in that starboard corner is the other stabilizer. And then this area is fronted by the fresh water tank, which also has a sight glass to let you know how much water is in there. Inspection port, really well thought out, very well laid out. A little bit of contortion to get to some of the things, but you can get to everything, and that's the beauty of it. So pop down here every once in a while, make sure everything's ship shape ready to go, and then go back up and go boating. Thanks for joining me today aboard Miller Time. As you've seen, she is a spectacular Katie Krogan 58. I love the twin engines, all the active fin stabilizers, great layout down below. This is a boat that a couple would be quite happy with. Wonderful for live aboard, wonderful for going exploring, going cruising. There's really all you need in this one compact package. Back on the swim platform here, you could jump in the water, go for a scuba dive, whatever. And the nice thing about this boat is that it's ready to go. They've spent a lot of time and effort when they bought it in 2017, they put it in the yard, got the boat all repainted. There's no such thing in my mind as a turnkey boat, but this boat is ready to go. And so if it's time, if you're thinking about it being time, it could possibly be Miller time for you. Notice that it's five o'clock just about everywhere. Maybe that's the time for you to think about giving me a call. If you'd like to do that and get aboard, we do that by appointment. You can call, text, or email me. The information's on the screen. I look forward to hearing from you and let's get you aboard and you can see what Miller time's all about. Hey, great to be underway again out on the water. Love it out here. Thank you very much for watching the video. We have a couple of things you can do. One thing is you can click the bell to get a reminder when we post the next video. We love it when you give us those thumbs up. And then you can subscribe by clicking the button below. Once you've seen a couple of videos, you might also want to check out some of the other ones. So you can click on one of these videos on the side. Thanks. We hope to have you come back here soon and we'll be putting up more content shortly.